Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sila Dithiare, your stress management teacher here today. Why I'm a teacher today? Because I'm going to talk about teaching as a major stressor now. So that's it, academic stress. And in this particular program that is stress takes, I'm going to talk about very many useful things which are going to be pretty helpful for you. So please be watchful, be attentive what I'm going to say. Now academics is not the same anymore. In our days, we used to go to the school just to stay there and study and in the break we used to play. We used to come back home and go on to the field and play cricket, football and the rest. But nowadays, not only the school curriculum has become very intense, they are under extreme pressure. And how often have you seen that children are carrying huge bags of books on their shoulder, which is itself a stress. So that's a physical stress. And I have in my clinic have been seeing students complaining of spondylitis, backache and very many other problems. So who is going to address those issues? So we have to be careful on this that there are certain changes which has to be made. But I am not responsible to do this change. But you as a parent, you as a kid has to take into account that these are the things you need to a little by the use of scissors cut them down so that life and the studies and academics becomes much more easier for you. Another point which is of importance is that school curriculum has become a sort of a, a quagmire meaning that you know people do not know exactly what to expect out of this academic system. The examination system is sort of faulty, the students are under extreme duress and the parents expectations are on the rise, the social expectations are also very high and students are really fighting it out in the middle in order to pass the examinations. So examination itself has become a major stress. I have encountered large number of students on a daily basis that they are suffering from examination phobia and it can have a telling blow on their life. Students are committing suicide. Many of them are actually in the state of suicidal intentions and inclinations. So who are going to take responsibility of this? Am I going to take responsibility or the parents or the society or the entire school fraternity? It's a collective work. Let's be very clear on this front is that we have to do a collective responsibility. If we do it, the children are going to be spared. Otherwise, the future is a little dream. So that's the brutal reality out. And we have to take into account that these are the areas we really need to sharpen or hone or really use the scissors so the children's life become much easier. And finally, in order to come back to a conclusion is this, the children should not be placed much demand on their shoulders and children also take it easy and they have to have the regular study hours so that at the end of the examination or just before the examination begins that they are under pressure. So if the children are under fire, so they'll not be able to deliver. So that's the reason that the children, they often actually fumble, they stumble. And this nemesis and these impediments can actually stage a major block in their life and finally they can have a heroin experience.